We are exploring the underrated capital of Slovenia, Ljubljana. It's easy on the eyes and it's easy on the purse both. People don't know whether the river came first or the name of the city and it means beloved. And this is why you ask the locals for fun facts. Welcome to Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. And no, it is not Ljubljana. J is Y in Slavic languages. It's Ljubljana, or if you want to make it easier for yourself, Ljubljana. The locals don't mind it, actually. I picked it up from the tour guide. So it is the capital of Slovenia, like I said, and no, it's a different country from Slovakia. They're both Slavic countries, beautiful and both different. So it's a teeny tiny country, lots of greenery, lots of nature and a lot of beautiful places. I'm going to start the journey here in this capital, which is quite tiny and easy to navigate. It's easy on the eyes and it's easy on the purse both. So it makes the perfect spot for like a nice little city break in summer. It's also easy if you want to go around the country. I'm going to start the journey here in the capital. And first stop is to take the free walking tour and then I'll take you around after that. So let's start the journey. Guys, I just finished the free walking tour in Ljubljana and I have Peter the Great with me. <laughs> He's going to give you a few reasons why you should come here. And honestly, the city is amazing, quite small but there are more reasons to come here. So over to you, Peter. Thank you. Um, so hi, I'm Peter. Yeah. Uh, you, why you should definitely come to the city, to Ljubljana, is because of all the history that's packed in one place, all the cuisine, all the drinks, and basically parties are happening. Uh, we have uh, a lot of festivals constantly going on. You should definitely recommend, uh, consider coming on Friday or around Friday because food festival. <laughs> uh, and besides this, there's another thing. If you're stationed in Ljubljana and you have a car, for example, or you rent a car, uh, I mean, okay, other transportation uh, means are also available, but everything is one hour away. You can, one hour you can be into the mountains, one hour to the sea. Basically meaning one hour to Italy, one hour to Austria, one hour to Croatia, one and a half to Hungary, but who goes there? <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely welcome to come here. Uh, if you do, well, uh, you're welcome also to attend one of our uh, tours uh, or you can experience, uh, you can explore the city by yourselves. Uh, we also have a castle on top of the hill. <laughs> so, I, I mean, honestly, I had a great time with Peter. So if you do come, do check it out. I'll put the link in the video below. Let's continue exploring the city. This is the Congress Square. It has some really interesting buildings around. Definitely worth a visit and I really like that it's not so busy, but during the evenings they do have some festivals, music, etc. This behind me is the Pashernov Square. It has a big Franciscan church and the reason for its name is this. This is Pashernov and he's the national poet of uh, Slovenia and I don't think if they have any I mean, I haven't seen any statues of any founders or any generals. No, you know, big sword wielding personalities around. That's quite refreshing. So guys, I have Patrick and Iratu, and Patrick is Slovenian and he has some interesting facts about Ljubljana for you. So over to you, Patrick. So, uh, people from Ljubljana, especially if they're not from Ljubljana, uh, you would call them uh, Žabari or Žabari, which means the frog people. And so there's basically two reasons for that. Uh, one is that in the local dialect, instead of saying Kai, which is the Slovenian for what, uh, they say Kva. So if someone's very confused about what's going on, they'll be like Kva, 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 Kva. And the second one is that actually Ljubljana, the city itself, is at the northern part of a swamp or marshes, uh, which are actually part of UNESCO World Heritage. So the fact that they sound like frogs and they actually live in the same habitat uh, lends itself quite naturally 
to the nickname. And this is why you asked the locals for fun facts. All right, so continuing on, um, let's go see some bridges. Did you know Ljubljana has 11 or 13 bridges, depending on how you count the triple bridge? So I am at the triple bridge, and then I'll show you the dragon bridge as well. And this behind me is the triple bridge that we've seen already um, on the side of bridges. And it's a quite beautiful walk. If you just go down that way, it is really nice to walk around the river, which is also called Ljubljana. And it is a little bit of a chicken and egg thing. People don't know whether the river came first or the name of the city, and it means beloved. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can bring you some more interesting travel destinations from around the world every week. I am at the Dragon Bridge of Ljubljana. I thought it would be much bigger, but it's actually quite small and cute. Now it has some great views. You can see all the way up to the castle, as you can see in my background. And by the way, if you're going up, there's a lift that takes you, like a funicular type thing that takes you there. Um, they are a little obsessed with dragons here. And if you don't believe me, just check out the flag of Ljubljana. That's all I'm gonna say. It rained pretty much throughout my stay in Ljubljana, but honestly, even with rain, I still had a great time. Slovenia might look like a teeny tiny country, but there's plenty to see and explore here. Click on the link above to check out my Slovenia playlist. I really like that Ljubljana is so small and it is quite easy to walk around a few steps and you get to the new place. So this behind me is the Cathedral of Ljubljana and the most fascinating part so far, I haven't been inside yet, are the doors. This one and the one on the other side. Let's go check it out and see what it, what's it like inside. Apart from the doors, the building is rather simple, but its green dome is visible from anywhere in the city. change as soon as you get inside though it is beautifully designed in baroque and it's a lot more opulent and you know obviously there's a lot more bling there are frescoes and yes it is fitting for the cathedral of a capital of a country Here's a little fun fact for you about Slovenia. The language hasn't evolved over time as much. So my friend Patrick can read scripts that are 1200, 1500 years old without much difficulty, but it is a very difficult language. I can't really talk inside, but I got to know some interesting things. The cathedral had no dome for quite a big part of its life. The artist just simply painted the dome inside, giving you the illusion that there was a dome. I don't know why they built one later. Hmm. I'm standing outside the main cathedral of Ljubljana and this is a square where magic happens on Friday throughout the summer. Some of the best restaurants in the country come and basically serve, set up their stalls and serve food more street style at a discount. So it's a great chance to get to know the food in Slovenia. Sadly, I missed it by one day. If only I knew I would have moved my flight, definitely. Yeah, this is all I get to see. Yeah, don't miss it on a Friday. I'm heading for a little walk in the old town, and yes, this part has more of an Austrian vibe. The next stop is the City Hall of Ljubljana. And why am I bringing you to the City Hall? Because of its gorgeous courtyard. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. 
this is the library of Ljubljana and it's quite a building. Now it looks quite quirky from outside. Apparently it's equally quirky inside with a grand hall. I really wanted to check. This was like on my list of places to see, but sadly it's a little late on Saturday and it doesn't open on Sunday and I'll be gone by the time it opens. So if you get a chance, do come in. It is beautiful, even just to look at from outside. Nope, this is not some sort of video editing. It is simply a science experiment set up in one of the tents. There are quite a few around. Instead of letting the children feed on sugary stuff and run around, they actually have these set up so they keep them entertained because the results are not what they expect. Actually, not what I expected as well. And that gets them interested in science as well. How cool is that? I'm impressed. The cafe and bar culture in Ljubljana is pretty strong and the best place to come and explore this is by the riverside. Even though it's raining right now, it's still pretty busy. I'm just gonna get a drink here. Of course, Ljubljana has a fairy tale castle right here. And here I am in the castle. Now getting here is quite easy. You can take the funicular from the base of the old city center at the end near the cathedral. You can walk up like I did, about 15, 20 minutes, easy hike. And the third way is to come up. You know those green trolley things you see in the city center? You can hand them um, down any time and they can bring you up or around the city center and they're free. That's a handy tip. It's a pretty standard European Slavic castle, but the best reason for coming here is not just the castle alone, it's, it's exciting and interesting, it's the view. Let's go check it out. On a beautiful clear day, you can see all the way to the Slovenian Alps. Doesn't seem to be the case today, but it's still beautiful. I am in Matulkova and this is an autonomous area in the city of Ljubljana. It's super colorful, there's a lot of graffiti here and they don't follow the same rules as the rest of the city. Another example I could give you is the Christiania in Copenhagen. I'm not sure how it relates to Ujupis in Vilnius because they actually have a bit of a more, you know, a country designation. I don't think they care so much about the legality of things mostly people who are, have been squatting here. Let's go check it out. It is pretty deserted because I went on a Sunday morning, but on the positive side of things, I got to explore this with a bit of, you know, peace. It's really colorful, it's really funky, and there's a lot to see, but it's quite a small area, so you can easily get down. But I can totally imagine coming here for, you know, drinks in the evenings, and it would be much more livelier. So, what's there not to like, right? It's a cute city and, I mean, can you imagine? They have more than 200 festivals here in a year and there's always something to do. So, that, that I really like. It's, it's, it's a good place. So, this is it from Ljubljana. I really hope you enjoyed watching it with me and I hope you enjoyed getting some tips from the locals as well. And click the link above, meet me at the lakes and this is Sayonara from here. This is Brown Boy Travels and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you want to find out some more cool destinations, do follow me on Instagram and TikTok and obviously subscribe on YouTube so I can bring you beautiful destinations every week. I will see you at another gorgeous place in the next video. Until then, you have a beautiful day ahead. Bye!